The original Niche Zero was an instant classic, and it immediately redefined the quality and workflow benchmark in the home coffee grinder market. Now, almost six years after the initial launch, the once revolutionary specs have been somewhat eclipsed by equally affordable and capable grinders. In my opinion, it is still one of the best workflows of a home coffee grinder, despite the burr set and appearance becoming a little bit dated. But then, with very little advertising and very odd timing on April Fool's Day, a new model appeared on the Niche website. This one, the Niche Duo. Not Duo because it's the second iteration, but because it looks to provide true dual functionality between espresso and filter brewing without the sacrifices of all the other all-round grinders. It does this by providing two separate and quickly swappable burr sets. Does it succeed? And is it a worthy successor to the legendary Zero? Let's find out. Starting off with the build quality and design, this is gonna be a pretty concise summary. It is the same as the Zero, but bigger. Now this isn't a bad thing at all from a build quality perspective as these grinders are very solid with the wood, heavy metal bodies and absolutely no jumping or movement whatsoever when grinding. However, my one original complaint from the original Zero is still present, which is the lid. The plastic and weak hinge simply don't feel up to the level of the rest of the grinder, which is unfortunate because it's a part that you actually touch and interact with on a daily basis. Switching to metal or maybe even wood would have been a nice upgrade and it could have still incorporated this clear window if that's something they deemed to be functionally important. Size wise, while the difference is quite apparent with them both placed side by side, on its own, the duo doesn't look imposing or oversized on the countertop. I suspect that any sharing of this grinder on social media will result in an endless stream of people asking whether they're looking at a Zero or a Duo, because without the context of them side by side, it really is tough to tell. Now there is definitely a part of me that wishes Niche had gone with an updated design to match this grinder's updated capabilities. I don't mind the rounded looks, but with so many sleek and modern designs coming onto the market, I feel like this one looks, well, over six years old, and it has always been a bit divisive, even from the start. Now, if you single dose, Niche is still the king in terms of workflow. It achieves throughput that is never more than a tenth of a gram off from what you put in, most time just being perfectly on. They advertise plus or minus 0.2 grams, and it easily delivers that. Exchange is also fairly minimal, which is impressive for these larger 83 millimeter flat burrs. And most importantly, it achieves this without the need for any bellows or knockers. This is single-handedly the biggest reason to buy either niche grinder. The workflow is simply the best. I'm not sure how other brands haven't managed to duplicate this since the Zero was first launched, but I have yet to see a single dosing grinder that truly does not need bellows or a knocker to achieve this level of performance. However, in some ways, the Duo has actually taken a small step backwards, particularly when it comes to cleanliness. Because of the switch to flat burrs, Niche have foregone the feed ring that also served as an anti-popcorn measure on the Zero. And because of this, Popcorning is a noticeable issue. Small bits of coffee can come flying out and find their way out of the lid and wait to just fall onto your kitchen counter or floor. This is disappointing for me because it could have so easily been avoided either with a similar disc to the Zero or even just a tight seal around the lid and the top of the dosing funnel. Sound levels when grinding are higher on the Duo due to these larger burrs and the faster 530 RPM, but overall it is still a very quiet grinder. More importantly than sheer volume, the tone is non-disruptive. It is not high and whining like some other grinders, it's just a low rumble, which I have always liked. 
One update also worth mentioning that is also available on the Zero is the new dosing cups. It might look the same on the exterior, but this new version they put out a while ago with the gently sloping bottom is super nice and makes getting out all the grounds a piece of cake. Even if you already own the Zero, I think this dosing cup is a worthwhile upgrade. Moving on to the Duo's party piece, let's talk about the swapping of the burrs. Niche offers this grinder with either espresso burrs, filter burrs, or both burrs as a package. Initially, when this grinder was released, it was only offered in the package with both burr sets, and I am very happy that they have backed away from that initial decision, even if it makes the Duo naming not make a whole lot of sense anymore. I'd even go so far as to recommend that Niche open this up even further to include other burr sets such as those from SSP and allow their customers to mix and match as they please. Swapping the burrs on the Duo is very straightforward, but rather than talk about it, I might as well just show you in real time. Apart from the very simple process, the more impressive aspect of this is that the burrs perfectly retain their zero point and alignment when being swapped, which is absolutely critical for this to actually function as advertised. But it's much easier said than done from an engineering perspective. The bigger question is, do you actually want that? And to help answer that question, let's move on to the burr sets and grinding quality. Fans of Niche have long been asking for a flat burr version of their grinders. As home specialty coffee has erupted over the last few years, so has the opinion that large flat burrs are the superior choice over conicals. Lance Hedrick did a fantastic video on this topic that I will leave linked down below, but one part of it that I really liked was showing a rough representation of where he felt conicals and flats lived on a scale of texture versus clarity and how much overlap there is in the middle that either is often not given credit for. The Niche Zero's conicals produced a textured and chocolatey espresso that gave the grinder its reputation. However, in terms of clarity of flavors, it left something to be desired, and for filter brewing, it was really a complete non-starter due to the amount of fines produced. In the case of the Niche Duo, it's currently supplied with 83mm Mauser burrs, one set for filter and one set for espresso. Just out of curiosity, I tried to brew the espresso burrs as a pour over, and while the results weren't fantastic, they still well outperformed the Zero for filter, in my opinion. Now, when used for their intended purpose, the espresso burrs produced a profile that I was really enjoying, and after using them for a few weeks, they quickly became my go-to setup for espresso over my previously used X54. Espresso had a nice, open presentation with good complexity and great texture for both straight espresso and for use in milked drinks. These burrs also have enough clarity to nicely handle lighter, more delicate roasts, but I definitely would not describe them as bright or very high clarity. The notes remain more balanced, and for espresso, I enjoyed that. The filter burrs also performed well, however, they also lean more towards a balanced flavor profile, rather than the brighter and more insightful characteristics that I personally prefer when brewing pour over. I think that it's a little bit surprising that in a scenario where they're providing two sets of burrs, that they maybe didn't go a little bit more extreme with the included filter set, but I can see many people really enjoying the sweet and balanced cups that those burrs are producing. 
So with all of that being said, who should be considering the niche duo? I think that the best way to approach this grinder is to view it within a complete vacuum separate from the whole burr swapping duo concept. This is an 83 millimeter flat burr grinder with a few different burr options. If you love the idea of a niche zero, but we're craving a change to flat burrs, and if this physical appearance is still appealing to you, then the recently updated pricing makes it a very attractive option, even when compared to its nearest competitor, the DF83. If given the choice between those two, I would pick the Duo all day long, simply because of the fantastic and seemingly still niche exclusive workflow. In fact, I think that it also has better stock burrs in the Mazers than the stock burrs on the DF. How I would not suggest considering this grinder is as an all-arounder that you are going to switch the burrs on in between drinks to serve an espresso and then serve someone else a filter. Even with the impressively fast changeover, I still just didn't look forward to the task and never ended up changing the burrs more than once per week. The system is great, but I just don't think people will actually use it in that way. In the end, it does provide beautifully easy access to clean your grinder and should be considered a huge win for that reason, but that reason alone. I like the Niche Duo, and now that we're past the whole weird launch and pricing confusion, we can focus on the fact that they have managed to upgrade the grind quality on the very successful Niche platform and offer it in variations for both espresso and filter lovers alike. It does have some small quirks such as the popcorning, which I hope might be fixed down the line, but overall it's a grinder that I can confidently recommend in this price range. If you want to check out the Niche Duo, I will have it linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.